So this evening, we are going to have a discussion based on the question that our dear sister asked. And as I read the question, you know, I, I mean, this sister is just so lovely, you know, so sweet. She's, she's one of us, okay? So somebody's question is just like your question and my question too. And so with permission from her, she said, oh yeah, sure, you can go ahead and have this discussed on the marriage school. Because you know, sometimes that which burdens one person may also be the burden for another person. And so we decided to discuss it here. Our sister talked about feeling extremely overwhelmed. She felt tired. She felt like the assignment was too much. And then she began to list out her duties as a wife, a mom, um, a worker. You know, she felt that she already has plenty on her plate. Then she went ahead to share with me that as a result of that, she's not able to have a consistent prayer and Bible study. My heart was filled with compassion as I read it because that was exactly how I too felt once upon a time in my life. I felt extremely overwhelmed. I thought it wasn't fair. I thought it was just too much, you know, to be a wife, to look good, smell good, you know, have a shower at the close of day, kind of be prepared for your husband. And yet still I had to change the diapers and, you know, keep the house clean, make sure the children are also looking good before daddy came from work. But then I was also a worker and so I had to get things doing at work. And at different stages of life, you know, it played out differently. So there were times when baby was between zero and three months. And so we had to close at 3 p.m., go and feed baby and get home early and all that, put things in order. But then I realized at the time that my husband did not like to come home and the baby's not looking good. Like baby has to, should have had a bath, should have powder all over his neck, should be looking spot on. Mommy should not be looking, you know, like a war torn, whatever. Like I too should be looking good. The house should not be looking, you know, kind of like messy. It should also be put together. At a time we didn't have a house help. It was a lot. So when I read her next line, she said, because of that, she was not able to have a consistent prayer life. Yeah, same here. I, I wasn't praying. I mean, I was just mumbling a few words on my lip and off I went. Talk of Bible study. Even at that time, I wasn't even doing audio Bible. I was doing next to nothing. I would just mumble, jumble a little bit on my mouth and, you know, just pray a bit and ask for help and off I go. And so for the bulk of the time, I really used to feel frustrated. I used to feel annoyed and sometimes I would feel sad. But at that time, we, you know, the children we had are gifts, you see. And sometimes you, you, you wonder, like, you know, God gave me a gift, a good and a precious gift. Our children are gifts. The marriage is a gift. The spouse is a gift. And every gift that God gives us is never to frustrate us. It's a blessing. But I wasn't seeing any blessing at that point. I was feeling frustrated. I was feeling upset. Did I love the babies? Yes, please, I did. Did I love my husband? Yeah, most of the time, yeah, but sometimes I'll be upset, etc. And so I had to get to the root cause of the problem and find help. And so when my sister shared this with me, I thought that, you know what? Instead of sending you a personal voice note, why don't we just share with all others? Because there'll be sisters on the platform who probably have walked this journey as well, and they would also like to share. Is there anybody here who would say, oh no, never felt frustrated, absolutely fantastic, everything was okay? I'm not sure. And so we are here to have this discussion together, share with our sisters, and remember that ultimately, at the end of the day, it is the truth that will prevail. You know, at a point I thought to myself, in what way does the enemy attack us? From John 10, 10, the Bible says that the thief came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus, he says, but I have come to give you life. This print is in red font in the Bible because this is, uh, this is the words of Jesus. He said, but I ha have come to give you abundant life. And he says he's given it to us more abundantly. He's given us life, the fullness of it. 
But then he tells us that there is one that is called the father of lies. Sisters in the house, I want you to understand that the way the enemy weighs down on us, the way the enemy burdens a person, it's not with an AK-47, it's not with a cutlass or a knife. He doesn't come that way, no. He doesn't come wearing a hoodie. He doesn't come, you know, in some strange form. No, 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 no. He just comes with words. Sisters, I want you to get this and get it real good. He comes with words. He comes to speak. He comes to whisper. He comes to tell you a lie. He comes to pose a question that can cast doubt on the goodness of God. He comes to create a linkage between your stress and give you, a, 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 you know, and a kind of link it to, to a reason that is a lie. So, for example, he can tell you that, oh, it's because of your duties as a wife and mom, etc., that you don't have a consistent prayer life. That's not true. Now, the Bible says that you will know the truth. And it is the truth that you know that makes you free. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, somebody may know the truth. It will liberate them. But until Adeline gets a revelation of the truth for herself, she will remain in bondage with a lie. Not too long ago, I used to believe and I used to say it. This is a teaching for another day, but you know, sometimes when... <laughs> And the Holy Spirit is speaking. You just have to allow him to speak. Some time ago, I used to believe that I'm a morning person. No, I used to believe that I'm not a morning person. Okay, so you would often see me, if you are close to me and you know me, you will see me very wide, wide awake in the AMs, 1 AM, 2 AM, 3 AM. I can go as far as it takes. I can use that time to do whatever, anything and in everything. You know, I can use that time to clean up. I can use that time to read, to work, to pray, whatever. I, I, I'm a late, uh, I stay up pretty late. I'm able to do that. So I used to say that I'm not a morning person. So usually early morning, if you're looking for me, unless I need to catch a flight, I need to you know, have, have an appointment or something, you won't see me up very early unless I really absolutely have something to do. Now, I realized in this season when the Lord called me away that everything that I had believed, okay, became my limitation. Are you hearing me? Everything that I believed became my limitation. The Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The limits or, or the, the level to which you shall rise is up to your thinking. So, each of us can rise as far as our mind sets allows us. Nobody is going to rise higher than their thinking. If you and I here believe and we think and we believe that greater works than Jesus did we would do, we will walk in it. But if that kind of thinking is too far-fetched and we doubt it, we don't believe it and it's not a mindset, sweetie, we will not walk in it. So for as far as I was just toying with the belief system of, oh, yeah, I'm not really a morning person. I mean, I'll wake up in order to catch a flight, catch a bus, write my exam, go for classes, you know, whatever, do whatever, go to work, drop the children. I will wake up to do that. But I did it with a struggle. Sweetheart, it's not a struggle anymore because the Lord caused me to catch it, to recognize that outline, you have believed a lie. And because of the lie you have believed, it limits you. So anytime that I had to rise up early, anything I had to do early, even if I had to do it for a period, I would do it. But sisters, I was doing it by might and by power. So I would get up by might, by power. For how long can you sustain human effort? It's not going to happen. Because you're not going to excel or you're going to, not going to have victory if you do it by might or power. So there were times when we tried to do our wife duties, our mother duties, 
you know, duties at work. We try to balance it all together. We enjoyed, you know, we, we used to like to listen to teachings that will teach us, you know, how many ways to do this and that. We will copy what somebody was saying. But it seemed that at that time, we didn't have the wisdom to go to the creator because there's somebody that created you specifically, somebody that created me. There's somebody that put your marriage together. There's somebody that put mine together. There's somebody that knows us and there's someone that has the solution. But at that time, we didn't like to go to him directly. I told you, I said, I wasn't even reading the Bible. I, I had Bible, so not, it's not like I didn't have. I had Bibles. I wasn't reading it. I wasn't making time for it. So my frustration increased. Because any time that you fail to attach yourself to the vine, you will dry out. Do you think? Uh-huh. So, so that's what I was going to. So as I read my sister's you know, message, I, I remembered those times. And I said, you know what? I think we need to share this because answering this to, uh, to, to all of us, I mean, it will help us. And I think that quite a number of sisters will testify that they too have walked this journey. I'm going to continue to read my sister's message. So she says, she says, then it seems that the responsibility of a husband's fidelity rests on his wife. She has to pray more for him even when she hardly finds time to pray for herself. She has to dress well. She has to be well groomed. She has to say the right things, do the right things, respect him right, keep her feelings measured, even when she's feeling emotional and so much more. She was like, how can one person do all this? And then she continues. And it seems as though no matter how hard one tries, she always falls short. Seems like a man's ability to fight temptation rests on his wife. It's not fair. Is that even practical? Then she says, also, the one to whom you are called to help is continuously reminding you that you can't teach him anything. Whatever you say appears as if you, you know it all. He feels you have a know-it-all attitude. She was like, ah, but what then can I do as a wife? pray? Is that it? Should I just pray? And she says, please help me. So that's what we are discussing here tonight. You can take a statement by statement, bit by bit. You will begin to identify what is it that the enemy is whispering to us through this speech. So, so, so this this thought pattern will come into our hearts as wives. Sometimes all of these thoughts pattern, all of it or some of it or even more than what I've read comes into somebody's mind and all that. I want to suggest to you that it's not you thinking this. The enemy is whispering it and you are receiving it. Now, if you stay on this matter for too long, it will become a meditation. You will begin to ponder it. As you ponder it, this is lying in the realm of your thinking. As you ponder it, you will begin to feel frustrated, irritated. You might begin to resent your position. Remember, it's God who gave you that position. God placed you there. You will begin to resent your position. You will begin to think out of alignment. You will be out of sync with the Lord's will. And then you will begin to work it out your own way. The Lord has been speaking to me quite a bit on fine sounding arguments. Make sure that nothing deceives you. And sometimes we can deceive ourselves because we can begin to have fine sounding arguments in our thinking pattern. We can begin to reason things out. That was exactly what happened to Eve. This enemy came and whispered some question. It was just a question. Didn't bring a knife. Didn't bring a bomb. He just brought a question. And when she began to process that question, that was the beginning of the end. If you begin to process, I'm sad, I am disappointed, I'm so upset. I mean, what's all this? I mean, what did I sign up for? This is not what I, you know, when you begin to process these things, instead of processing, you know, the beauty of his face, the beauty of his glory, at a point I was even wondering, when I say the beauty of God's face, well, how does that even look like? I mean, do I even sit there to love him? And that's why he said I should ask Sister Maureen to sing that song one more time. For oh, how much he desires that we love him. But here we are. We fixated our love and our affections on so many things 
And those very things are letting us down. Beloved in Christ, he taught me one thing in this season. It's just one thing that you and I ought to seek. It's just one thing. And if you seek the one thing, all the other things are added unto you. Sometimes we are so all over the place trying to find solutions for many things. But he's calling us to just one thing. Sisters, will we desire to sit at his feet and receive the truth? Will we desire to receive Jesus, to receive him in his word? Will we desire to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, considering the fact that he is the spirit of truth? Jesus tells us to go, 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 go out there, go and make disciples of all men. But before that, he says, hey, wait, wait. You can't go without this. Wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Allow him to teach you. The Holy Spirit teaches us also with words. He will speak to you through the word of God. He will encourage you. He will help you. Recently, in my, in my morning time with him, early before dawn, very the Bible says a great while before dawn, you know, Jesus arose and he went to spend time with the Father. He went to pray. The Lord started to do the same with me a great while before day. He would cause me to rise and spend time. And so in one of the times that I was spending with him, I was just singing to him and singing. Abba, I belong to you. And I was singing to my father. And I was calling him, Abba, Father, I am yours. Abba, Father, I belong to you. And I was just singing. What a wonderful time in his presence. Abba. I belong to you. Then I heard the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. He began to speak to me. And he reminded me some time ago when I was younger. It was an expression of irritation to say, Abba, what's wrong with you? Abba, what's all this? And I just used to say it. It was no biggie. It was just a word. But I told you we are helped through words and we are hurt through words. Now, the father says, don't take my name in vain. And those times, those were the expressions. And I'd never thought about it until the day I started to sing to him. And as I sang to him, he reminded me. There was a time when the name Abba was an expression of frustration for me. And I would just say it. But the Bible says that we shall give account of any careless word, whether you think it or you speak it. So, sisters, I'm here to encourage you. I want to draw your attention to the truth that once we hold on to the truth, you realize that we cannot de be deceived. Any time that you find yourself in a fix, you are in a certain situation or you have a problem, the solution is strictly going to be. Jesus. The solution will be Jesus and yourself. Full stop. That's all. It's never another person. Never, you know, maybe the morning. I'm not, I don't do mornings. I wait till night. It's not the night. It's not, it's not, it's not the person. It's not a thing. It's not something else. Don't, don't point the finger over there. Don't look to somebody. Oh my gosh, because of my duties, I can't have morning devotion. Sweetie, no. Your affection your affection is in question. Your affection, your desire, your passion, that is what is under question, is being attacked. It means that your love is growing cold. When you are so much in love with somebody, nobody will plead with you to spend time with him. And I don't say this to condemn anybody. I just say these things to expose myself to you. The Bible says we should confess to one another and then we pray for one another and we are healed. I too walk this kind of path. The one that I desired to pray with me was my spouse. The one I desired to have Bible study with me was my spouse. And as long as he wasn't doing that or whatever, I felt equally weakened and I was right there also just, you know, fainting away. I did realize that because we are one flesh, it's kind of like you, you can just die off just like that. You know, and I gave excuses and I'll complain. I'll say, you're not praying with me. I don't feel loved if you don't pray with me, da, da, da. But the, the word of God says that if you love me, you will obey me. 
Do we love him? Do we love him enough to stay in his word? Do we love him enough to pursue him? Do we love him enough to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Knowing that all these things, all the other things that used to be our pursuit will be added to us. We've gone after idols and idols don't work. Idols are, are dead. They don't work, you know? So I just came here to encourage all of us and just to share with us. The Lord is calling us to a higher ground, to a closer walk. A sister put on one of the platforms. A higher ground than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Your heart and my heart should have no desire to stay where doubts abound and fears to spend. Some people may, may stay over there, but you and I may, must desire to rise onto higher ground. But how can you rise unless you go closer to him in knowledge, unless you come to know him more? And as you know him more, he begins to help us in all our human relationships. So for us to be able to get a consistent prayer and Bible study life, we have to get back to the secret place. We have to come back to Jesus. Come back to Abba, Father. The Bible says, return to your first love. Remember the height from which you fell. We need to return to our first love. When you return to your first love, you would realize that you're beginning to catch fire again. You would realize that the things that you thought you couldn't do, you would find out that the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is true. You will begin to be able to do. The Lord will help you to get your affections back and in the right place. I realize that whenever I set my affection back on the Lord, he helped me to love my husband better. He helped me to love the children well. He helped me to love people better and not have an attitude and not have resentment and not be full of frustration and stress. Do you see it? So we are going to get back onto our love for him. And maybe your question will be how? How do I get back to my love for him? How do I get back on track? I was just sharing with a sister today that there comes a time when I just pray a simple prayer. God, help me. It's very simple. God, help me. Help me. Lord, I feel weak. God, help me. Help me when I don't know what to do. Help me when the going gets tough. Help me when I'm in trouble. Help me when I'm struggling. Help me when I'm down. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me when I'm confused. Help me when I don't know which way to go. Help me when I lack understanding. Help me when I can't pray. Help me when I can't read the word and when I don't even understand what I've read. Help me when doubt and unbelief seems to take, take over me. Help me when anxiety seems to overwhelm me. Help me when I'm angry and sad. Help me. Help me when I'm feeling lazy. Help me when I, when I seem to be retrogressing instead of progressing. Help me when I'm in bondage. Help me when my mind is cluttered with lies. Help me when I struggle to forgive and to love. Help me when I stray from you. Help me, oh Lord, I've become prodigal. Help me when I lose my spiritual favor. Help me, help me, Lord, for I have lost my fire. Help me for my heart is growing cold. Help me, Lord, for I am complaining instead of expressing thanks to you. Help me when I lack spiritual knowledge. Help me when I don't know the word. Help me. Help me. And he helps us. He will help you. Sometimes before you know it, he just makes a way where there seems to be no way. You say, what does that even mean? Well, I've moved into the realm of the supernatural. And when it comes to the realm of the supernatural, he does it. He does it. So all you do is just to come back and testify. Do you see it? He will help you. 
He will help you to get back to a consistent prayer life. All of our thoughts are prayers. As I go through my whole day, I've come to a, an understanding of the revelation of the secret place. So I'm there. <laughs> I'm in the secret place. I can be in a conference or in a boardroom and I'm not distracted. I am in the secret place. I can be in a very boring location, but I am in the secret place. I can be in the car, can be in a bus, I can be at home. I am in the secret place. And all of those moments, your thoughts are prayers. Do you see? So you start to develop a prayer life. You start to begin to speak to him the whole time. You can still be at work, but you've come to an understanding. You've caught a revelation. Then he will help you. He will help you also in your Bible study. For me, I think that that which gave me a breakthrough was the audio Bible. Oh, the audio Bible was a, was a great help to me. I started to listen to it in the car when I drive. I used to have my earphones on, you know, even when I was home, I would listen. Sometimes I go to bed and it's on. And what began to help me so much, I started to switch it on and put it in my children's room as well. And so from time to time, they will come and ask me questions. Before I knew it, I was studying with them because they will ask you questions. You got to answer. And sometimes they'll say, oh, mommy, I want us to discuss this. Mommy, I, want, I read this. I heard this in the audio Bible. Mommy, what does this mean? Mommy, why do you think this man was born blind? Mommy, why do? And then before you knew it, our conversations changed. Do you know what happened in our marriage? Our marital conversations changed. The conversations that used to be, you know, quarrels and arguments, things like, I'm, I feel so stressed. I don't think you care. I, I don't feel helped by you, da, 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 or that kind of thing. It changed. It became the word. <laughs> Sometimes we'll just say, wow, you know, today when you were praying, when, when, when you were praying and when you were later playing the audio Bible, you know, this scripture jumped at me. I'm like, oh, really? Which one? It says, oh, this one. Wow. You know, we never understood this very well. This is what it means. But we've always thought it meant that. I'm like, wow, really? And then I'll be listening. And do you know what? We never quarreled in that space. Then I caught it. Look at what we are discussing now. At first, the discussions were always centered on self. Self. Me, me, me. Jesus was not preeminent. Me, I, me, I. Do you see? So I'm just here to encourage you. Uh, I think that we, it's, it's almost what, 9.20. I know that other sisters will also like to chip in and then we can progress from there. So maybe I should pause now and allow my sisters to also come in. All right, so I will take a pause. Sister Uswa, Sister Paride, could you please take it up from here? Invite other sisters to join in the discussion. Thank you. So much. Thank you so much. The Lord is helping us. He's helping us indeed. So it's not a matter of self, but focus back to our Lord. Focus back to Jesus. Yes, sisters, I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Any comments? Any contributions? Anything that, any experience? Whatever you have, please share in the chat. Or if you are able to speak, you can share with us, any of the hosts or co-hosts, and we'll share on your behalf. Thank you. It reminds me so much about my own self. And I love what you said, Pastor Adeline, because if you truly sit back and you begin to take a look, you begin to see the pattern is the same. If you listen to other people's stories, you listen, you watch your own story, you see that it's, there's always that reference back that you are you are not enough. And sometimes the questions that go through your mind is it's the same questions. I married wrong. What am I doing here? I'm wasting my life. I'm, I'm depressed. I'm not doing a good job. This man does not see me as I am. I'm, I feel so unappreciated. And it's the same thing. The pattern does not change. 
And it really takes a moment to step back and look carefully and realize that you are not the only one targeted in that way. You are not the only one spoken to that way. And it really is a hook. All the devil wants is to hook us in and realize so that he can have our attention, he can have our concentration. We can be distracted from what our purpose is, what the Lord really wants for us. And start thinking, start walking, start acting the very way that he wants us to. It's amazing. Um, as we wait for you, I'd like to touch on my own story and how I see myself so much in this in this sharing. Because a few months back, this is this was me. This very story was me. And sometimes I remember even when the children were young, sometimes you clean the house twice. Once in the morning and then once before her he comes home. Because they were toddlers and everywhere will be scattered. So you are trying so much. And sometimes you, you get to the point where you think, am I not doing enough? But you are. You are doing so much. But I bring it fast forward. A few years later, when the Lord began to help me. And when my, my focus began to now be on him, on God. Not that much had changed, but then now, because my focus was on God, I was not so self-centered. I was not so self-focused and also not nitpicking at my husband. And for what I mean is, some of the things didn't matter as much anymore. The, the the gravity or the weight that I put on it seemingly it seemed diminished. And I think there was even a time that I was so distracted in a good way because now I was focusing more on God, trying more with him, trying to just read my his word, trying to pray. And all the, I didn't believe my husband was surprised. It was like, hey, today you're not talk though. That kind of thing, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't have attention to focus on the little things anymore. It's not like they didn't matter to me anymore. They did. But because my, my, my concentration was more on God, I myself was not a tool for the devil to use to do certain mm. things. That mm. yeah. And to my sister, I want to say, it gets better. It really does. Mm -hmm. And the gospel of our Lord is so simple. It's so simple that I think sometimes we overthink it. We overthink it because mm. we are told over and over again that read the word. It's enough. And it seems like, oh, this Bible, I know it already. Mm -hmm. Or oh, this is too simple. I need some lay of on of hands. I need something, you know, some gymnastics have to happen. <laughs> but just that simplicity, just that rawness, just that honesty with God, God, I'm feeling I'm not doing a good job. I need your help. This is really how I think about my children. I don't even really like them. Sometimes I feel like I don't like them. I don't like my husband. You know, that just that honesty, just that one step towards God, without God, I need your help. This is not how I should be feeling. It's enough for him to draw you and say, let me teach you the right way. And I'm saying this because there was a time that when I, I had on closer walk, some ladies said that they would go to God and report that oh, my husband has done this, I'll come to report to you. And only when I went to report, I went to do some. Hey, I rather felt the weight of the conviction of my own self sinfulness. And I would lay in bed and me that I'm reporting to God. <laughs> 
I will be sobbing, crying. And I remember one time my husband asked me that, why, well, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And I said, I don't know why I'm crying. I feel so bad. <laughs> I feel so bad about myself. And I just want to point to the, the, the fact that we are not as good as we think we are. It's easy to point fingers to other people and say, it's his fault. But then you see, the standard is not how you see. The standard is how the Lord sees. And how the Lord sees is so different. He's so good that he doesn't see the way that we see. He, he sees in other ways. So for him, for him to get the results that you are looking for, a husband that loves you, a husband that cares and has attention for you in the, in the manner that you are thinking. For him, it's true service. You will say pray for him. So if you feel like you are having to do so much, it's necessary because that is how the Lord can change the, the, the person. Do you see? It's important because what is the alternative? If you go down the route of insulting and backbiting and telling everybody, that was me. I want to talk to everybody, everybody about how bad he is. It doesn't change. The result remains the same. But the way of the Lord is different. The way of the Lord requires that you lay down yourself. And if you read Philippians 2.14, this is some of the scriptures that the Lord began to teach me. Philippians 2, 14 talks about the sacrifice, about not, not arguing. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly how it goes. But not being argumentative. Do you see? That is, that is how he expects us to approach them. The very thing that you feel like I'm sacrificing too much. Is the, is the way that the Lord will use to make things better. And if you had told me that into my future, at that time, into my future, there are some certain traits that my husband would, would build as I began to focus on God. Guess what happened? He also began to focus on God as well. And so you see, then the pattern is also the same. You find Pastor Adeline saying that as she focused on God, this is what happened. I can testify that that's the same thing that happened with me as well. I mean, I would wake up and I'm carrying my phone. I have Spotify on my phone where I listen to music sometimes. I, I hear music coming from the living room where my husband is sitting with me. And music worshiping God. And the music is so good that I actually think, Nipa, I'm carrying my phone. Now. I'm holding. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to show you through my eyes the times of bewilderment. Oh, yes, times of bewilderment that I had where I'm carrying my own phone. I know that my playlist has worship music and all of that. But I'm walking into the living room. And I'm hearing gospel music. And I and I open my mouth and my husband sits and I ask him, ah, is that my phone? <laughs> Are you playing music on my phone? I don't know. That's my playlist. Do you understand? But this is the same person that it was not like that before. But then I see it. I see how he's, he's making him turn around just because my focus is on him. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Stay with the Lord. Okay? You are not making a mistake and you are not sacrificing too much. That is a lie. And you see, the devil always speaks. His strategy is simple. He speaks with a first person. Um, how do we even call it? Like he speaks with I. I am depressed. He will whisper to you, I am depressed. You understand? So at that moment, you have to learn to recognize that word. Maybe you're not even, like you're just having a good day 
And then you, a thought comes into your mind. Not all the thoughts that come into your mind are your thoughts. Okay. You have to recognize the attack on your mind. I am not able to do this anymore. You can. And you are. And you are progressing. You are doing well. It is not true that you are failing. It is not true that you are a failure. It is not true that you are doing a bad job. You are actually doing an amazing job. Because until he stands in, in his stead as the leader of the house, you are doing your job. And it's fantastic. Do you see? So sisters, we have to learn how to recognize the eyes that the, the, the devil speaks into our minds. I am. He will say to you, you are. But he will not say it as you are. He says, I am. And in that moment, you have to recognize that, do I accept this and become it? Or do I cast it down and take on the true image that my father has for me? Do you understand? The goal is to see ourselves as the Lord sees us. In two ways. As the state that we truly are in, how we are contributing to a situation and how he expects or how he's leading us to do better. Amen. 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 Sis, thank you so much. Thank you very, have... very much for sharing. Yes, you have, you have a question, um, a contribution. I do. I do. I do. I do. Um, all right. I think we have two questions here. So, um, we, does the age of your children not influence how overwhelmed you get at the end of the day? I feel like those of us with young kids are easily burned out due to the level of work involved in seeing to their needs. The husband, the home, truth is at the end of the day. I am physically tired. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I really appreciate this question. Um, it still brings us back to, you know, when we started, we talked about the fact that the enemy, he wearies us out through words. Okay. Now, one of the things that the Lord taught me, which I had to really catch and grasp, I had to learn, was that he made me aware that he wanted me to enjoy every season of my journey. So what the enemy does is to say, oh, you know what, you know, um, so sometimes, so, so there's a time that the couple get married and they don't yet have a child. Sometimes you see that they are on a honeymoon, they seem to be having pleasure and joy. Then suddenly they begin, you know, whispers and thoughts come and sometimes they begin to feel discontented with that state and they want a baby. So there comes a time where sometimes they can have a stressful time and feel upset and cry and want a baby. Then pregnancy comes. Then sometimes they find it like a bit difficult. Oh gosh, I'm tired, my back, you know, and all that. And so there's a bit of a complaining time in that period. And then there's the time for delivery. And it comes with this own whatever, which sometimes it's like there's so much anxiety build up and all that. Then there's a new baby. Then there's the whole, oh gosh, I'm up every two hours. Oh, I'm breastfeeding. Oh, you know, breast is gorging. It's, this is difficult. Da, da, da. And then babies are toddlers now. Oh, he's always touching the electric wire. I'm there. I don't have a helper. This is difficult. I'm exhausted at the end of the day. And then they, they, they are now around age two. And the system of the world say, oh, terrible tools. That's something. And sometimes I counsel them, right? Why don't you just say tremendous too or terrific too, you know? And then there's a belief system there. And then on and on and on we go and, oh gosh, are your children going to be teenagers? Oh, that's so difficult. And then young adults, oh, this is hard. So if you don't take care, what the enemy does is to cause us to be in a complaining zone the entire stretch. And so when you look back, you know, it's all like, you know, you exhausted the whole stretch. So the Lord brought me to a place where he said, I shouldn't do anything with grumbling and complaining, but that in everything, I should just thank him, doing everything as unto the Lord. So I started to enjoy. I can look at your white beady eyes. <laughs> look at the children. I'm like, oh, wow, so spotless. Look at your eyes. Look at, you know, I started to enjoy the stages. 
I started to enjoy each stage. I would just, you know, because it's, it's not coming back anyway. That stage doesn't come back. Whatever you missed yesterday is gone. Tomorrow, you, you know, yesterday that never comes back. I started to enjoy step by step, step by step. And then I realized that this is the way to live. The enemy always wants us to be in a mirage. You want to, you, you want to regret yesterday or you, you always want to live into a future. Oh, tomorrow, if he changes, I will do this. Oh, when the children grow, I will do that. Oh, when, and then what about today? So today never works for you. Do you see? So I had to have a renewed mind. You know, Sister Nano also said something. She said, it gets better. It gets better. She said, it gets better. But, yeah, but she didn't add this. You see, it, it doesn't just get better with time. It gets better with a renewed mind. Because your feeling is connected to your thinking. Now, for as long as you believe you are tired, sweetie, you will be tired. So, you know, that's why I started sharing you know, my belief systems, I should think, oh, I'm not a morning person. I'm exhausted in the morning. I slept late. So you guys, I slept late. Please let me sleep kind of thing. <laughs> you know, so that was it all. And then the Lord started to show me, no, no, no. I'm going to take you on a journey. And he really took me on a beautiful journey. This, whatever you have believed now, I'm challenging you by the mercies of God to renew your mindset concerning the matter. I want you to take up the scripture that says, I can do all things, not through my strength, not through whatever, my effort, but I'm going to do it through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I thank God for these children. They are young, they are little, they are whatever. I thank God for their lives. I'm going to trust him to help me. He's going to help you. Today, I went to visit a sister who had lost her husband. In fact, today it was two sisters that had lost their husband with a number of children. But some way, somehow, he prayed for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. He came back home. They are being helped by the Spirit. But when we went, another pastor friend was with me and he shared that his dad left to be with the Lord at the age of 49. He was four years old then. There were eight children and they were left with mommy. And the eight children were spaced by like somewhere like nine months, one year, you know, very closely packed. They were left with mommy. I don't know mommy's level of education. I don't know mommy's level of funding. I mean, he, he just had God. They said they would just look at mommy and get strength. Mommy says, daddy is in a better place. Daddy is with the Lord. They, they said they used to look at mommy's strength to believe mommy's statement. Today, they are all grown up. Some are pastors. They are all in places of res you know, responsibility and all that. How, how did that young woman do it? Now, off the top of our heads, we just might say, oh, no, this one is too hard. I can't. But really, truthfully, when you put in the through Christ who strengthens me, there is no limit to what you can do. I've come to a place where I've started to really enjoy you know, the work, the assignments. I was just sharing with somebody recently that those times I, I used to, I used to just, you know, invest in giving cold cereals. You would drink conflicts, you will have conflicts right now. Because, because I don't have time. So I pour the milk, you know, the, the, that one was easy to do, right? So we pour the cold milk, conflicts, some sugar, we are done. But I, the Lord just took me on a journey and I started to enjoy the hot meals. After that, I'll wash all the plates, the pots and pie, everything, and still be on time. Me, that used to be late. You know, so I, <laughs> I realized that the Lord is able to help us to do home and do it well. He's able to help us to do everything and do it well. Charlie, oh, in those times, it gets fastest. Look, I, I process the food and then I, I fix it. I put it there, you know, fast. You know, I wanted some easy way out. And, and I wasn't even, even the easy way out. I wasn't enjoying it. Too. I was just like, yeah, the assembly was all this, you know. But the Lord taught me something else, you know. And it's, it's such a beautiful life. And when I was doing that, you know, the children would be like, mommy, Charlie, mommy. And <laughs> they would be so excited. I'm like, hey, these children, when they get food to eat, they get a bit of comfort, you know. Then suddenly there's all this, you know, joy all around. But I started to enjoy my assignment. 
I mean, maybe at a later date, I'll share more, but the Lord has greatly helped me. I'll tell you what, not too long ago, I went through a process where I was feeling a great deal of exhaustion. And it wasn't the kind of exhaustion that was going to be sorted with sleep. I'll sleep and wake up and I'm still really tired and drained. I was kind of feeling weak. I didn't know what was going on. I had to do a lab and then we saw what was happening and it was, it was kind of really draining. So I needed to make some changes very quickly. So I started to do those changes. Now, before I could make any progress, as in medically or on my labs or whatever, one day I sat up and I said, no, this is not my portion. No way, I won't accept this. So I knew the facts of the matter. I had the facts on paper. I had seen it. I'd done the test several years, so I knew. But then I changed my mind and I said, I am not sick. But the point is that according to the facts of the matter, I was. But according to my mindset, you see, your faith, faith is a mindset. Eh? You, you, cannot, you cannot rise above your thinking. The, you know, the, the, the limit is your thinking. You can't go higher than what you think. I just decided that no, I won't accept this. I'm, I'm well, I'm fine. Do you know that my, <laughs> it was amazing. Like my husband and I were just like, wow. My biggest breakthrough manifested itself when I changed my mind on the matter. I suddenly became stronger. I suddenly, look, I don't know the last time that I invested in, in setting on, an, on a decluttering campaign in the house. <laughs> I so many things at my old engineering books. I'm now, you know, a long time. I don't remember the last time I even delved into engineering, but all my books were there. I had so many things. And I just started to declutter the house. That which I would give out, that which I would, you know, donate. Somebody needed books or whatever. I started to do all that. The Lord started to help me. You know, so many things. Home was free and beautiful and fine. Room was spacious, fine. You know, I just started. And the Lord helped me to do this at a time when medically, it looked like, Charlie, go and lie down and rest. But according to the belief system, my mindset, I had strength. I believed it and I got up and I moved. So do you remember what Jesus said to the man who had sat at the, at the poolside for 38 years? He said, do you want to be well? What a question, Jesus. Can't you see I can't walk? What is this? I'm sitting here, I'm crippled, I'm lame, I can't walk. You, you said, do I want to be well? And, and that was just the question. Oh. The question was, do you want to be well? So if you want to enjoy your journey, you want to enjoy the little ones, you know how cute they look, you know, so lovely. You, if you really want to enjoy your journey every step of the way, sweetie, you can. But it's going to start with a renewed mind. You have to believe this is so. You have to believe that God is able to help you. And then you just take that step. Do you, do you see it? At a point, <laughs> at a point, laundry for the little ones was so stressful for me. Sometimes we are going on vacation. I'm like, yeah. Charlie, these vacations cry, I even get more tired by the time I come down. Because by the time I go in, the pajamas, <laughs> sets of pajamas, sets of shorts, shirts, da da da. You know, and by the time you go, where's your shorts? Where's the, and the things are all over. You know, then I used to feel drained. And I wasn't enjoying the vacations. And I asked myself, why? What is this? Enjoy it. You know, so I came to a place where the Lord helped me, the Lord gave me that wisdom. And I was able to do it. Now I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even if the going is tough, I believe I can do it. I thank him. I ask for help. And then we flow. It got to a time I wasn't even smiling. No. Smiling was rare. There was a time when people advised me, you know, like if I do share, somebody will say, oh, you know, why don't you try comedy? Charlie, comedy ain't going to cut it. What is this? What kind of counsel is there? I should try comedy. Comedy didn't do. In fact, it will even irritate me more. It wasn't about movies, so. <laughs> no, we are talking about a certain power, a power that the Lord gives you to do all that He's called you to do. So now I can laugh. I have joy. We have conversations. We can tease. We look back at the pictures when the children are much younger. We, you know, all of those things. So I just want to encourage you. The children may be young now, 
but I want you to have a change mindset. That thing, that thing draining you, that tiredness, we want to begin to change the thinking pattern. You remember Sister Nano Usra talked about the power of the I am. Moses said, when I go, who should I say sent me? What's your name? I am that I am sent you. I am, that's the name of our father. So you want to begin to speak life over yourself. He says, choose you this day whom you will save. He says, I have set life and death before you. Blessings and curses. Choose. Choose life that you and your household may live, you and your family. You see, you see he's, once again, he's saying, do you want to be well? He said, choose. Do you want life? Choose. Do you see what? That's just it. I should choose just like that. Don't you get it? God, I'm tired. He said, you chose it. What? I didn't choose it. I am really tired. So anytime you speak the power of the I am over you, what comes after it will be your inheritance. So you don't want to say, I'm sick, I'm drained, I'm depressed, I'm something, something. No. You see, so when you speak I am, you want to speak his, you want to speak his strength, his peace, his comfort, his truth over yourself. Sometimes you say, oh, no, no, I'm not able to do this. Oh, no. And then you realize you're really not able. Do you see? So I want to encourage you. You want to enjoy those moments. Sometimes I go to the shops and I see the little baby crying, oh, baby. And I'm like, you know what, let me just stay in my lane. <laughs> you know, because sometimes the enemy wants us to live in the past tense and the future tense and forget about the present tense. Just enjoy the time now. Enjoy. Okay, enjoy. Play with the children, talk to them, you know, pray with them, speak life over yourself. You know, just enjoy it. And everything we are sharing now, let it be a challenge to you as you walk that journey. Do you see? Just walk it, practicalize it. I remember one time I took a sheet of paper out and I started to speak. I started to write out the I am's over myself because I couldn't flow it out from my brain. At the time, my whole speech was, I'm so sad, I'm miserable. So I had to now change it. So to change it, I had to be schooled. I had to be trained. I had to be educated. So I had to get a pen and paper out and I started to write. I am blessed and highly favored. I'm a daughter of the most high God. I am a giver. I am an encourager. I'm a virtuous woman. You know, I started to speak it, started to write it, and where to spirit. You see, so you speak life over yourself, you say it, you believe it. Because it used to work when I used to say the other things. I'm sad. I was very sad for a long time. I cried. My classmates never knew me in tears. But as I spoke it, I became the thing I was speaking. Highly unattractive, very difficult to be around. Because I was speaking it, do you see? So try the other way. I'm a godly woman. I'm a virtuous woman. I am kind. Speak it. Speak it and live it and enjoy your gifts. He gave you a good and a, a, he says a good and a perfect gift. That's what he gives us. All his gifts are good and perfect. Okay. Yeah. God bless you, sweet sis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have two hands up. I have a question, but let's take the hand. Sister Margaret, can you please unmute? Yeah, thank you. I'm very, very good. Thank you, um, Pastor Adeline, for this chat. And whilst you were sharing, I just um, got to share this. Um, anytime, previously, anytime I hear um, the world, it gets better. It's a volume is low. Oh. Sister Please, can you can hear me? You. Can you hear me? Yeah, the volume was really low, so maybe. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I was saying um, thank you, Pastor Aline, for what you shared. And whilst you were sharing, I was led to also share a, a journey that uh, God walked me through. Previously, when I hear um, people say it gets better, I become encouraged because um, I have an expectation. So whatever problem I'm going through, if it's with the kids, with my husband, with the job, and I hear it gets better, my expectation is that if I'm having a problem, if the, the problem is X, Y, Z, then it gets better. So the X, Y, Z gets better, isn't it? But then um, I realized that if it doesn't get better, I get frustrated. So I ask myself, when does this end? 
because you realize that especially with the children you think oh when when um it's a baby it's so difficult you're breastfeeding you're not able to wake up uh, you're sitting up all night you're not getting the help and then they go like it gets better obviously they grow up they are not they are no more um, um on the breast but then another thing happens you start weaning them and so it goes on and on it changes it doesn't get better but what i realize that changes is me So when I hear that it gets better, it's actually the person. It's me that I get better. So when I get better with the help of the Holy Spirit, the same problems are there. Sometimes it becomes worse because now they are older. They have got their own thoughts and ideas. So it's difficult to navigate things in the morning. And, and someone is already dressed up going to work and I'm having to go through all of this rush and also get myself to work. But I realize It is me. So when I start the day with the Holy Spirit, I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. The same chaos is there, the same problem, the house is in a mess. Everything is the same or worse as it was, uh, worse than it was. But it is me that I have changed. So uh, most of the times when we hear the, the word, it gets better, we are looking to other people that, oh, it gets better. Maybe my husband will change. It gets better. The children will change. But it is actually you. That is what I realized. That is the work God uh, uh, work with me. So that it gets better is me. I get better with the Lord. I get better in managing these things. So it is me. And I, I just hope it helps someone or it blesses someone because most of the times we look outward. We don't look within ourselves. We think the solution is elsewhere. But it's, it starts with us with the help of the Holy Spirit. If God helps you, you'll be able to navigate the same problem, even much more. But then you realize you're more resilient, you're, you're happy, you're, you, you see things from a very different perspective, like examples Pastor Allah was giving us. You're able to do all the chores and everything, but you are, you are on time, you're not as stressed as before, the way you talk, your mood changes. It's, you realize it affects every other thing, so that it gets better, it starts from you, you start it from within yourself, and then other things also will follow. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. That's so powerful, sis. Thank you. Sister Nana as well. Yes. Thank you. Sister Krupa. Hi, thank you so much for this. I had no idea such ministries existed. Thank you so much, Pastor Adeline, for sharing your wisdom and um, everyone else as well that shared. So um, some context here. I was told by the Lord on one Sunday morning, he woke me up at like 2 a.m., which is so strange because I have like two babies under the age of two, 11 months apart. Don't ask me how we done it, but we, we, we're here. <laughs> and um, so waking up at 2 a.m. is completely like not okay. But the Holy Spirit woke me up that day and said, you're going to fast for 40 days from your phone. And then that Sunday, Pastor Adeline, you were preaching about your fast, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a confirmation beyond a confirmation. So anyways, I tell you that because during this phone fast, the Lord has really been showing me something, and it's that he uses the foolish things to confound the wise, meaning that like, I'm, I have two babies, 11 months apart. In the world's eyes, I should be a tired mom, sleeping in, you know, having the most help, but we don't even have family here. Like we've, I don't know if you can tell from my accent, but when I'm not from here, um, but we moved here from the Lord's calling, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, in the world's eyes, I should be taking so much rest and I should be depressed or whatnot because I'm so exhausted. But the Lord has been waking me up at like 2 a.m., 1 a.m., 3 a.m. And the amount of things that I get done in the day is ridiculous. Like I can do four days worth of jobs in the house in just that one day. And I just want to say that like our equation when it comes to what we think is wise is like foolishness. Do you see what I'm saying? So like, I want to encourage somebody that your equations, your maths don't equate to God's maths, meaning it, maybe you think waking up an hour earlier than the children wake up is going to mean that you're tired for the rest of the day. But like, try it out and see what the Lord will do because I guess what I'm trying to say is the Lord just wants a willing and and like a willing heart that says oh Holy Spirit my flesh is weak can you wake me up at you know 3 a.m or 4 a.m because I know my flesh wouldn't want to listen to the alarm and honestly he's been waking me up with like so much energy where even if I wanted to fight it and go back to sleep I just cannot 
So I say that to say, like, test test the Lord in a in a good way uh, with with the maths that you think is correct and with the math that He can do, basically. Uh, and then I just want to say another thing quickly to add to that. There is a there is a YouTube channel called Superbook, and our children absolutely love it. And it's like Christian. Um, cartoon episodes on youtube it's really good and there's an episode on there with like um the walls of jericho it's about the walls of jericho and in that the people in jericho are like oh look at these foolish people coming to attack us by walking around the walls yeah they're coming to examine how great our walls are oh my gosh ha 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 anyway long story short we know what happens the walls of jericho come down through the shouting and the praising right and so I say that to say, like, that's such a good episode to pair with what I'm saying in terms of God's math just does wonders. Our maths are just foolishness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Cooper. I love Super Book. <laughs> I watch it with my children as well. And it has yeah. some really good insights for us adults as well. Yeah. Um, that you, you see that one thing I, I want to add is that I myself, um, so you see, there was a time that my my mindset was, God, take this away from me, okay? Make this better. And yes. I want to say it in compliment to um, what mm -hmm. Sister Margaret also said. God, take this away from me. Change this. Yes. Make the situation different, you know? Mm -hmm. But then the Lord began to show me that even in that moment, the prayer should not be God change it, but God walk through with me. Mm. And I know this is something that sure. we probably have all heard this before. But you see, mm. the thing is that we, we can't, it, it is not about changing the situation, but whatever the situation is, walking it in intimacy with God. So that however it looks like, God can be all things to us. So it's not a, a, a relationship where all things are good. So that's why you serve God. But even when things look some way, you are still able to come to him. You're still able to, to, to walk up to him and say, God, I'm here to fellowship with you. Even though it looks, it looks funny, it looks, it looks all this. Do you see that the beauty of our relationship with God is that He's a constant? Do you understand? Is that is the circumstances around us that change? But whatever circumstance that you find yourself in, He remains the same and He's our anchor. He stays with us. And I say this to the sisters that said, it doesn't look like it's changing, like I'm so tired. I'm always so tired. Even in your tiredness, lean on him. Do you see? Lean on him. Prayers look different ways. Sometimes you will whisper a prayer, and that's all the Lord needs. He just hears your heart. And, and when the children are young, whatever stage they may be in, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm finding it difficult to pray. A prayer is a whisper. A prayer is, Lord, help me. I'm really feeling like this. Lord, I need your help. Can you hold on to me? Everybody else expects me to be strong. I don't know what I'm doing. That is a prayer. And it's enough. It's enough. Let's not keep our, our mouths closed. And in, in, in ending, I also want to say that like we are talking and it sounds so gentle and everything, but this is warfare. You understand? It is warfare. And so to the sisters that... When you, you are trying to say, I am kind, you are trying to recalibrate your words, speak in alignment with what the Lord expects us to speak. Do you understand? When you are talking like that and then the devil says to you that you are not as kind as you think you are, it may mean, it may mean shouting back, I am kind, I am kind through Jesus Christ. It is warfare. It's not nice soft 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 all nice soft 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 do you understand what i mean it may mean saying it to yourself over and over again 50 times if it may be and so he understands that she is she she has a stubbornness in her she's determined 
that this is who she is. And the Lord begins to make you as that. Hallelujah. 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 Sister <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. These are very deep things. Thank you. In fact, as you were sharing and as all the sisters were sharing, I was like, hmm, we need to hit on this really hard. Okay, we need to really hit. You know, when you said it's a warfare and all that, there's something very beautiful the Lord is doing in this season. He's really raising up warrior women. He's really raising up an army of women, you know, that love him passionately, you know, that are going to stand with him, that are going to be intimate with him in the secret place and, you know, bring forth his nature, his kind. He's going to bring forth Jesus Christ. Now, the times when we had what we called, you know, you know what we call good old days, good times or whatever, whatever. We, we didn't have affection for the Lord. We were not serious. We, we didn't, we didn't, we, we were not serious in prayer. We're not serious with the word. You know, we just, we, we just did our own thing. I think we were very self-sufficient, probably proud. We were just, I mean, at that time we didn't think it was pride, but anybody who doesn't really pray, you know, it's giving a message of pride. It, it means I'm okay. I'm sorted. I don't need you, God. That's what it means, right? So these moments are actually moments to be grateful for because it brings you to the altar. It brings you closer to him. You are going to know him in ways you've never imagined. You are going to become a witness. You know, some of the things, look at what Sister Krupa was saying, that, she, you know, the kind of, the time the Lord is waking her up, though she has little children and what she can do. Like, I too bear witness to that, you know. Sometimes the journey has to be walked in order for us to prove that it is so. So we become witnesses. A witness is something you've seen. You've seen something, you can testify. You've heard something. You've been a part of something. So I want to encourage all of us that whenever you're going through a journey that is difficult, I know Ushua has talked about going through, right? The Bible says, ye do I walk through. You see, I go through. You know, you have to go through in order to break through. Ye do I walk through. So there's a walking through that will happen to each and every one of us. Let's walk it. Let's walk it. And during the time you are walking it, sometimes it's really unpleasant, but I've come to realize that there is no other solution other than Jesus. There is none. Even when you try to locate Jesus in a person and he sees your heart, that you're trying to find a person rather than him, that person will not be available for you. It has to be him. Do you see it? So I want to encourage all of us, okay? No matter where we've reached in our journey, it's a good place. It's a good place. God loves you deeply and he's walking with you. He's not leaving any of us alone. He says he would never leave us. He's already said it. We believe it. Okay, so there are times There are times when I sit with an empty chair, or most of the time, when I sit at dawn, I pull a chair by my side in front of me and I sit before that chair. You can sit with him. You can, you know, you can whisper to him. You can sing. You, you see? I mean, it's amazing how in this season, a lot of us started to hear the whole get away from your phone for a period. I, I went for, for about 80 days. I was even surprised. Because the first time I got the instruction, I didn't even know what the instruction meant. Because I was like, what? I don't understand what you're saying. He said, I'm moving you from the phone to the throne. I said, what? You know, I didn't understand. He said, from the, th from the phone of stress to the throne of grace. Most of the time when you're stressed, you go to your phone to look for somebody to rely on. What, we, what if there were no phones? Would you pray? Most likely, yes. Most likely, you would have gone to your knees. Do you see? But because the phone is there, sometimes we go to YouTube, we go to Facebook, pass here, pass it. We get distracted. We get busy about nothing. Those things don't have the power. They actually have the power to distract us and make us cold as stone. They have the power to take out our fire. And that's sometimes, that's where we go. Why is the Lord calling most of us away from social media, away from the phone, away from all of that? I think it's a message you got to pay attention to. Recently, I was telling my husband, isn't it amazing? The number of TVs we have in our house and, and what we have experienced with the TVs. Eh? <laughs> that will be a teaching for another day. There are many. 
the number that God's told him, the number that won't work, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, is Father giving us a message? Yes. The answer is yes. Sweetie, what are you focusing on? What have you been looking at? Do you know that a lot of us are unhappy and discontented in our relationship because a book taught us otherwise, to expect otherwise. Some kind of movie taught us to expect something else. Do you see? So now we want to go back to the truth, stay in the truth and be content with it. And you will see that we are going to blossom. You're going to blossom. You're going to enjoy. The husband won't change you. Same husband, you will be so blessed with him. Same children, you will be so blessed with them. Same household, you will be so blessed. You know, the Lord himself shall accomplish this. Okay. God bless you so much, sweet sisters. And I know, so let me hand over back to you. Yes, please. My able um, so, um, Pastor Adeline, so one more question. Um, I think we missed that. Um, the, the part about um, uh, the prayer of a woman being linked to a man's fidelity. Uh, Let me yeah. pull it up. He said, yes. good evening, Sister Nana. No. Please, what about the belief that a man's a woman's prayer is linked to a man's fidelity? Yeah, a woman's prayer. No, no. So she was saying that, um, so the question was that she was saying that she feels like for a man to be faithful, it's like the woman has to put in all the effort. It depends on the wife. Have you seen? So that, I think that's what she was saying, right? Okay, so she's saying, unless a woman prays, unless a woman, you know, carries herself a certain way, it's as if a man will not be faithful. But I wanted to, the scripture I wanted to share was, I, I think it's Matthew 15 or so. It was talking about the fact that Jesus said that it is out of the heart that sexual immorality, you know, in, um, adultery and all of that, you know, greed, all the vices comes from the heart. So I wanted to say that even that thought is not in alignment with truth. You see, nobody's purity or whatever is hinged on anybody. It's hinged, it's all coming from our hearts. So if somebody tells a lie or somebody has an affair or somebody, you know, feels or whatever, it comes from the individual's heart. That's why the Bible says that each of us should guard our hearts with all diligence because out of a person's heart flows the issues of life. You see, so if we think that is based on us, somebody's unfaithful, is based on us, somebody's faithful or whatever, then it, it, it's as if we are we have become gods. That's not okay. So I want you to know that all of us, having understood this, even when we pray for our families, when we stand in our gap, we say, Lord, you pray for the heart of your children, of your spouse. You pray for the whole family that we might know you, that each of us will know you for, for themselves, okay? Because sometimes, we have situations where, you know, spouses say, Charlie, my wife, they come, you know, and then it's all, it's as if they fear the wife. And so they try to be faithful in the presence of wife. And then it's as if the wifey also thinks that it is her prayer that is keeping people in check. You see, some of those things I would like us, I wouldn't like us to focus on it in that manner. We have to pray for our household, love everybody enough to pray for them. But don't do it out of fear. It's not because you are afraid. It's not because of your, you know, some false motive or some false desire that you are standing in prayer. Otherwise, the prayer doesn't even work according to James chapter 4. So we want to pray properly. We want to pray for our family. We want to cover everyone in prayer. And we want to believe that it is each person's heart. If their heart is devoted to God, that's good. It's like when somebody walks away on a spouse. If they left you, they didn't leave you, not necessarily because something you did, whatever. Most of the time, they've walked away from God first before they can walk away from people. That's what it is, you know. So it's not really so much about, you know, blame game and things like that, no. Okay, I'm saying this so that we can align ourselves properly because it will be very distressing if you become a God to people. When the Lord called me away, I knew that one of the reasons is that people are looking up to you rather than to me. So please get out of the way. I knew it. And that, well, he said it. He told me, I'm taking you away from your presence to my presence. He doesn't want that, you know, it's as if because of this person, somebody's being faithful or not. It's not correct. It's not true. 
Everybody is, if you are being faithful, then it means you fear God. That's what it means. If you are being unfaithful, then there's a problem between your God relationship and yourself. It hasn't got anything to do with wife or husband or anybody. Do you see? Uh -huh. So we all have to have the right mindset so that we can work well. Otherwise, you are making the journey very heavy for yourself. You are carrying burdens that you are not supposed to carry. You see? Uh -huh. All right. But then if you walk well with God, say Matthew 6, 33, seeking God, seeking him, like how Mary walked well with God, then, then God is the one who stands in the gap for you. You know, God is the one who stands in the gap. You know, you walk, walk well with God. If somebody walks well with God, like Abraham walked well with God, God loves him. God calls him his friend. He loves us all, but he had Abraham as friend and he would tell Abraham secrets. He would talk to Abraham and Abraham would intercede and the Lord will still go ahead and listen to Abraham. You see? So our work with God is critical. Very, very much so. Very much so. You see? But it's not so much just because of fear of affairs and those things. Because if you fear, rather, it happens to you. The Bible says, what I feared has come upon me. You don't want to walk in fear. So a study of 1 Peter 3, 1 to 6 will be helpful. Don't give in to fear. Don't walk in. Don't be afraid. Just trust God. Okay. Thank you. I know, so if I didn't answer it, well, you can add to it. Yes, it's that line. I think you did a fantastic job. Um, so instead of focusing on praying for the fidelity of another person, you can pray that the person would would have no um so for example, it. Ephesians 1.18 would say that I pray that the eyes of your your understanding okay will be enlightened. You can pray the scripture over the person. Because it's also a perception, isn't it? It's a perception yes. to think that wives have to pray for their husbands so that they are they are faithful. It's a perception. But then why don't we rather pray pray the heart of the father rather that they will have a conviction of 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 God, that God will reveal himself to, to, to them. We are all here because we had one encounter or the other. Each and every one of us has had an encounter with God where we saw him and then we came into, into his fold, right? So for the sisters that feel like, oh, my husband is not all that and he's not, he's not yet, it's getting there. But let's pray, pray over them, pray the word of God over them that their eyes will be open to see God. That you, because the Bible also says that what? The, the God of this world has blinded eyes, right? Yeah. So you pray the word over, over them that God would do his work in them. And that is where we have our victory. The word of God is our victory. And it's an assurance that we will, we will get according to his word. When you stand on his word, it is more assured than praying, God, don't let him be unfaithful to me as he's going out. These are rooted in, they are rooted in what? Fear. Yes. They are not the way of the Lord. And the, the, the result of it is, is evident. You are, you are afraid. You are half thinking all the time. The prayers don't have, they are not, they don't have substance, do you see? So I would encourage, pray the word over them. Pray that they will have a conviction that God would, would reveal himself to them. Yes. That is a better way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we are grateful unto you. We don't take for granted at all what you have done here in our midst. We thank you. Lord, we have had discussions, but we wrap it all up still at your feet, still at the throne of your, of your grace. And Father, I ask that each of us will have our own personal encounter with you in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to each and every one of us comfort us strengthen us and help us i pray that the joy of your daughters will be complete in the name of jesus i pray that none of us will wane in our faith in you in the name of jesus for you have called us into assignment you have given us this divine assignment you have given us this 
godly purpose i pray oh father that we would all align to your will and to your way holding on to your word for them that are stressed and heavy laden i pray that we will find rest in you we will trust in the lord with all of our hearts we will not lean on our own understanding in all of our ways we will acknowledge you and we know that you will make straight our path in the name of Jesus. For them that are tired, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will learn to wait. We will learn to wait upon the Lord. The Bible says that you give strength to the weary. You increase the power of the weak. You said that even young people grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But they that wait upon the Lord are the ones that renew their strength. I pray for an ability to wait. I pray Pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will give each and every one of us an ability to wait, to wait upon you, to wait in your word, to wait in truth, to keep our hope upon you, knowing that your word is true, that what you say you will do is exactly what you do. Oh, Father, I pray right now, I see that sisters are beginning to soar. They are mounting up with wings as eagles. They are running. They are not tired. They are walking. They are not fainting. Many are those that said I feel tired by the end of the day. I feel like I'm fainting. I feel exhausted. Let there be a renewal of strength in the place of waiting. Let there be a renewal of strength in the place of waiting. Even as sisters are praying, I pray right now that they will be edified. Even as they are praying, they will be edified in their inner man. Spirit, soul, and body be strengthened right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for supernatural strength to come up Upon your daughters, Reanda Makonde Shanta, Rehandelia Makonda She Andelia Makonde Shente, Mandele Makonda Sha Andaha, Reanda Reanda. Sweet Holy Spirit, we are not leaving this place the same. Makarama on the Lia Makonde Shende, Rehanda Lia Makonda and the Yama on the head, the Lia Bakonda Shanta. Spirit of wisdom and understanding come upon us in the name of Jesus grant us wisdom godly wisdom that comes from the very heart of the father depth of understanding of God that comes from you grant unto us spirit of counsel and might divine counsel that comes from within us and a divine strength that comes from you spirit of knowledge and spirit of the fear of the living God. Rest upon us. Rest upon us. Sweet Holy Spirit, rest upon us. I thank you so much. I thank you for what you have done in this place. I pray for my sisters, every single one of my sisters, that each will be strengthened and encouraged. Gone are the days when we would even hear the word and we, we didn't even understand it. We didn't enjoy it. But Father, you've turned things around. And that tonight, everyone has been fed. Everyone has been fed. Everyone who was thirsty has had a drink from you. I say thank you. Everyone whose fire was going down has come back ablaze. Everyone whose hope was down, that hope is restored in you, dear Lord Jesus. I say thank you. I pray that from today, we will quickly identify the lies of the enemy. We will promptly identify it. Even when he speaks statements that have an I am and we think that we are the ones speaking it, we will identify it very quickly and we will pull down that stronghold, that thinking pattern. We will cause it to come to the submission of Christ Jesus, of the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we will reject it. In the name of Jesus, we will take that thought captive in the name of Jesus. And we will be liberated as we hold on to your truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I pray for Sister Nano Usua. I pray for Sister Maureen. I pray for all our sisters who shared and all our sisters who helped host. Thank you. Continue to fill us all with your spirit. Let your presence be so much evident in our lives. May every home be blessed in the name of Jesus. We will not do battle by might nor by power. We will walk in your peace. 
your purpose, your counsel, your love, your truth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for our marriages. We thank you for this precious gift. Thank you for the children. We are grateful. Thank you. We refuse to complain. We embrace that which you've given to us. And we thank you that you give us strength for the assignment. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. sisters. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Adeline. Thank you. The Lord has been good to us. He's taught us richly today. And I believe that we are each going away with something. He has deposited something in each and every one of us. And as we go back into our individual houses, he will continue to teach us and lead us. We may not recognize when he's teaching us, but he will be there. And he'll be helping us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sis, sis. Yes, please. If, so a few sisters put out, you know, some messages, and I think that's really cool. So one of our sisters said, Lord, I connect to the grace in this house to rise early to take care of my family and all my responsibilities in the mighty name of Jesus. I find joy in my responsibilities in Jesus' name. I denounce laziness, weakness, tiredness and stress in the name of Jesus. My home is in order. My family is well catered for in Jesus' name. I receive my deliverance today in the name of Jesus. I come in agreement with our sister because these prayer points she's praying, I have prayed before, so I understand it. I totally come in agreement with our sister in the name of Jesus. And I speak this prayer over each and every one of us that in this house, as we have gathered together in one accord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, this prayer, oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the open heavens that I see. You have opened up the heavens upon us right now in the name of Jesus. Any form of laziness, any form of weakness, any form of tiredness, any form of exhaustion, any type of inflammation in our bodies, any type, any kind of, of uh, lackadaisical attitude, re -anda -makonda -shanta -ha. we renounce it in the name of Jesus. We reject it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, this year, 2024, we receive our deliverance, Rahande Makonda from these spirits that once held us bound we reject them in jesus name may every family be liberated in the name of jesus oh anybody connected to us receive your freedom right now in christ jesus any spirit of slumber that held anybody bound trapped to the bed in the comforts of your comforter i come against that kind of spirit it's right now in the name of Jesus. Daughters of God, arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. This is the time to rise up. Sweet Holy Spirit, I know that you are doing an amazing work inside of us. You are doing a new thing. Rehanda Makonda Shanta. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke laziness, we rebuke exhaustion, we rebuke complaining and excuses. In the name of Jesus, we will not remain the same. We will not go through the latter part of 2024 the same way we started it. In the name of Jesus, I speak a new season over each and every one of my sisters in this place. Father, cause each of us to come back and testify that yes, we are witnesses of your power witnesses of your power oh father i give you praise oh lord i thank you i thank you because i believe that you caused this utterance to come out here to be typed on this page so we can all tap into it and bring it back to your throne of grace i praise you i thank you in jesus name in the same way anyone struggling with social media Anyone struggling with apps on their phones, distractions, YouTube reels, let there be 